You know, all my uh, years of TV watching, I never once saw Columbo said, oh, yeah, there's one more question. Uh, where's the hard drive? But nowadays, if you watch crime shows or legal thrillers or 24, anything like that, you know computers really are a big part of uh, investigations. They're used for everything from actually evaluating evidence uh, to going out and gathering it. Today we're joined by a computer forensics expert, Richard Morachov, uh, from morachov.com. He's here to talk about how computers are being used to bring the bad guys to justice. Richard, it's good to have you. Welcome. Glad to be here. So you do a lot of uh, expertise. You were originally in IT. Yes, yes, I'm an IT consultant, and then uh, I just found that there was a growing demand for this uh, computer forensic investigation because right. computers are being used everywhere these days in all sorts of businesses and all sorts of things. And a lot of the evidence that used to be on paper is now on a computer hard drive somewhere. How, how savvy do you find uh, police departments and investigators are about this kind of thing? It, it varies. It yeah. varies. I mean, some uh, really know what they're talking about. Others, it's like, well, I don't know. We got this, you know, <laughs> computer stuff, and 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 you know, I find that in these cases, there's usually not much disagreement about what's on the hard drive. Where the disagreement comes is the interpretation. What does this mean? Right, right. right. And so sometimes what happens is they find the other side. They just have a very narrow interpretation, saying the only way this could have happened is this. And I say, well, no, there's actually about 10 other scenarios that could have happened as well. So that's why somebody who really understands computers is very important in this kind of setting, especially in trial, to, to, to give you a, a, a realistic view of what, what's going on here. Absolutely. So you say, you know, no, I mean, you have a very narrow-minded view of right, why this right, thing occurred. Right, right. Or, or sometimes they have an entirely different interpretation. So, so it's, it's that sort of uh, analysis and interpretation that tends to be uh, key in these cases. Is it, is it mostly data on a hard drive that you deal with, or what other kind of evidence would you be dealing with? Uh, data on a hard drive. Sometimes uh, there's things like uh, computer printouts, for example. I mean, there's some printers, for example, it's not necessarily well known, but there's some printers that when you print out a page, they actually put in the serial number and the time and date right. of the printout. So, I mean, there's all sorts of, you know, evidence uh, that, you know, that can come to bear in a case. Yeah, I know there was a big brouhaha a few months ago about the Xerox DocuColor because they put dots on the page and say, who printed it? Exactly. But, that, but you know, in the old days, a detective uh, could look at a typewritten message and figure out which typewriter it came from. So this is just the same kind of thing for a computer. Exactly. It's sort of a different way of looking at the same thing. But, you know, it came as a shock to a lot of people that, <laughs> that this is, that, that this this can be done. They thought they were anonymous, or people right. think they can send send a nasty hate email anonymously. Uh, uh, you know, but that's not the case. Oh, so you get involved in stuff like that too, tracking down who sent that email. Exactly. Sometimes people say, "Hey, I got this email here. Somebody has uh, threatened me." Uh, or said something nasty, uh, you know, who sent it? Did it really come from this person? They denied right. they sent it. You know, maybe it was spoofed, right. or maybe the person sent it and then later decided to to uh, deny it. So. Well, and I'm sure that comes up because prosecutors, judges, and juries don't necessarily understand what can and cannot be done with an email header. So they need somebody like you to come in and say... Exactly. So I look at the header and say, yes, this appears to be legitimate, right. or no, it looks like somebody <laughs> tried to try to spoof it. You know, right. It didn't really right. come from uh, Bill Gates and Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, here. We can assume that that's the case. Yes. What, what are some of the kinds of cases? Are they mostly criminal? Are they civil? I imagine it's a broad range. It's a broad range. I would tend to get involved mainly in uh, civil cases, uh, You know, both, both for the prosecution uh, and the defense. As far as criminal goes, the uh, police, you know, in terms of prosecution, they have their own experts. Right. Uh, I would get involved some cases in in terms of criminal defense helping out people right. who were the police know, say this is what it was exactly the defense may say well wait a minute you know not so fast there exactly yeah. so usually if there's a computer involved both both sides in the process if it's an important element they will have their own computer expert involved to analyze and interpret the data and you know can present their uh, their opinion as to what it means i asked you how savvy uh, law invest law, law officers were how savvy are the crooks are they pretty computer literate uh, it depends, too. I mean, you know, sometimes they really don't know what they're doing or they think that if they delete a file that's really gone from their computer, uh, you know, and it isn't. And other times they're into, you know, v very sophisticated encryption, right. trying to hide things, right. which, of course, also tells you some evidence, too. Like, well, if this is encrypted, highly encrypted, well, maybe there's some key information in there that's right. very valuable. I once asked uh, the Secret Service, you know, well, what do you do? Because, I mean, there is strong encryption that nobody can crack. What do you do if it's encrypted? And they said, well, we find that people usually give us the password if we ask. 
Uh, oh, <laughs> well, that's one way to do it. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Just ask, you know. It makes it easy. Uh, sometimes, I guess there is a tendency uh, among criminals sometimes to confess. You know, they want to they wanna get it off their chest. Uh, so well, we've talked about hard drives. Uh, what about, how about mobile devices like cell phones and PDAs? Does that come up sometimes too? Uh, that comes up too. I mean, now that they're becoming more capable, I mean, you look at what's in a lot of these uh, new smartphones, and they really are like miniature PCs. They That's have really their own true. processor. They have yeah. their own memory. You know, they have records of uh, phone calls made, and it can be it's important evidence. Uh, you know, in a particular case, you know, who called who when, right. uh, who's in the database of uh, you know of uh, frequently called numbers. The, the police have pretty good procedures now for this kind of thing. I mean, have they established, you know, like, for instance, you make it immediately, you make a copy of the data before you touch it, that kind of thing? Or yes, yeah, yes, that. yes. Because, uh, you know, I mean, in, in order to have a proper uh, defense, you have to have a copy of the original data made available to the other side right. to say, hey, right. here's, here's what the police used in right. terms of their investigation. You have to make a copy for the other side and say, fine, you get your expert to analyze and interpret it. And, you know, so we're both starting at the same base as opposed to, you know, only looking at what the police expert said. That's all new for them. I mean, they had good evidentiary procedures for, you know, fingerprints and, and, and shoes and, and hair, but hard drives, this is all new. They had to figure this out from scratch. It is new, uh, but uh, from my experience, they tend to do a pretty good job, at least in this area, mm -hmm. uh, on it, and, uh, you know, just give me the evidence, and, let, you know, I'll look at it and come up with, uh, uh, with my opinion on it. Uh, how about, uh, now we're seeing, of course, in Canada, Australia, the Philippines, all over the world, the, the laws of this kind of thing vary from country to country, or is it all pretty consistent? Uh, well, laws do vary, of course. Privacy uh, laws are, of course, uh, very different all yes, over the world. Yeah. Yes, yes, and, uh, and like, I'm not a lawyer, but, I mean, right. there's different ways of acquiring the data. I mean, right. for example, I mean, uh, if it's a criminal matter, you, you know, somebody has to get a search warrant. Right. Um, uh, here in Canada, for example, if it's a civil matter, there's something called an Anton Pillar order, which is roughly equivalent in which you can basically, you know, go to warrant. somebody and yeah. say, yeah, you know, discovery. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We, you know, we want this data. And of course, as we know in the States, you don't need a warrant anymore. You do anything you want. <laughs> what are the, some of the weirdest things you've heard of people hiding and, and, and where they've hidden them? Well, there's all sorts of different things. And people get concerned about some things. And, and yeah, you, you know, I get, uh, I got a call once. This, this is not a case I accepted. But, you know, there was this woman who was very concerned about some instant messages right. being sent. Right. Uh, be, uh, you know, and this was about instant messages that were that, that were apparently were nasty grams about her daughter. I think we got daughter. that call, didn't we? We got that <laughs> call on the show after they talked to you, Richard. I think she <laughs> called us. And, and what did you, you said, honey, you, you can find somebody else to help you on this one. Well, I I said, you know, it's you know, if you want to trace back, who, you know, which twelve-year-old child is sending messages, you know, about your twelve-year-old child, yeah. it's going to cost you a lot of money. She already right. went to the police, and the police, they said, you no. know, weren't interested. Yeah, yeah. Are, are there been lately landmark cases in this area that we the case law that things have uh, come up? Uh, things always come up. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think uh, what I find is that uh, judges and lawyers are becoming more savvy in the area, and they're asking deeper questions than before. So what that means is that mm. from the expert point of view, I'm having to do more detailed analysis where maybe I could have done a very simple report a few years ago right. uh, based on three or four hours worth of work. Now I might have to do a week's worth of work on something because there's some very detailed questions about, right. about things that they want answered. I think in the long run that's good. That means they're understanding it better and, and, they're, and they're digging deeper. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there is a greater understanding of what's going on. I mean, I mean, the judges and the lawyers, they are not computer experts, but they are generally smart people. Right. And so it's a matter in, uh, you know, from uh, the work I do. I have to be able to take this computer jargon and sort of explain Explain it to them in plain English, and sometimes that means putting in charts, graphs, you know, explaining things that are easy to understand for people who are not computer experts, but who are smart people. You're not dumbing it down, you're just making it accessible. Exactly. Because yeah, they need to know it. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Well, if people need a...